Howdy folks, we are going to talk about the early years of black South African resistance after whites took control of the country. Your goal for the screencast, there's actually two of them, when you're done you should be able to say I can explain what black South Africans tried to do to change conditions in their country. Also, you should be able to identify the kind of justice, and you can check out pages one and two of this unit, um, but you should be able to identify the kind of justice that black South Africans are asking for. So, having said that, Let's do it. So the ANC flag, we'll talk a little bit more about its significance later, but that's primarily what we're going to be focusing on this in, in what that is primarily what we will be focusing on in this screencast. So the ANC was formed, the African National Congress, in nineteen twelve, so about three years after the Brits took control of the Union of South Africa. And um it became known as the ANC in nineteen twenty three, and it was known by various other names before then. The constitution of the ANC was written in 1923 when it kind of came together under that name. And it had general goals. It wanted to unity and cooperation between the white government and black South Africans. It wanted to improve the lives of blacks. Um, address the concerns that blacks had about their life in South Africa. The early tactics of the ANC were pretty non-confrontational. They used petitions and hearings, so they kind of used legal means to show their grievances. They weren't very effective at getting things accomplished or in, in changing the way right white rule was unfolding in South Africa. And because of this, there was talk of disbanding or kind of getting rid of the ANC in the 1930s. However, it stuck around, um, despite the fact that it wasn't super effective and wasn't, wasn't very well supported during this time period. In the 40s, World War II drew more black South Africans to cities where conditions were bad as blacks were forced to live uh, away from whites on these very, very packed townships. And in this time period, the ANC Youth League was formed. This was a hugely important organization because a ton of really important independence era leaders from the ANC came out of this organization. Uh, the next big thing to happen for the ANC was the Atlantic Charter. This just kind of generally outlined the goals for the ANC and was heavily influenced by the ANC Youth League. The Atlantic Charter asked for better jobs, better pay, better education, and fairer land distribution for black South Africans. Additionally, it asked for full citizenship um, and full rights for people regardless of their race when they were South African citizens. So... Coming on the heels of the Atlantic Charter is the 1948 election of the National Party, which began the official period of the apartheid government in South Africa. So, th so things are about to get much worse for black South Africans. So in response to the National Party's election, uh, there's a program of action in 1949 by the ANC. And this is a, a big change in ANC tactics because they're going from kind of attempts at legal persuasion to mass action by ANC supporters. They're using civil disobedience and boycotts. They're using nonviolent resistance to get their point across to the white government. This is followed up by the Defiance Campaign, and this called in the Defiance Campaign, which was in 1952, the ANC called on people to break unjust apartheid laws, and they asked them to allow themselves to be arrested. They were arrested for using the, the segregated bathroom facilities, for not carrying their passes and, as they traveled into white areas, and things like this. And this was widely supported by blacks, as well as the Indians living in South Africa, and there was some colored and white support for the Defiance Campaign as well. Both the program of action and the defiance campaign were met with the widespread jailing of leaders of the ANC as well as the participants in these actions. Um, also, the police used spies in the ANC and in the ANC Youth League to try to figure out kind of what was going on and what was going to happen next as resistance to white rule unfolded in South Africa. These are some images from the defiance campaign in 1952. So young Nelson Mandela. Um, 
So next up is the Freedom Charter in 1955. And this was based on suggestions that the ANC Youth League had gotten from South African citizens as they went door to door trying to figure out what to do to make things better for black South Africans. And the meetings that were held to kind of put the Freedom Charter together were constantly raided by police as the white government tried to clamp down on these groups of black South Africans who were trying to get more rights. And in reaction to the Freedom Charter, 42 ANC leaders were banned in the end of 1955. And if you're banned, that means that you are not allowed to participate in political events at all. So your goal for this screencast was to explain what black South Africans tried to do to change their, to, excuse me, to change the living conditions in their country, particularly before the mid-1950s. And hopefully to identify the kind of justice that black South Africans were asking for. If you can do both of those things, that's great. If not, go back and rewatch sections of this screencast. Thanks.